Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Nick Barlow Radiology. Uh, my name is Nick Barlow, I'm a consultant radiographer based in the UK and today we're going to be talking about that most exciting of topics, yes it's paralytic ileus. So this patient presented with vomiting and abdominal pain post-surgery. So I'm, I am going to do some videos specifically looking at how to evaluate abdomens, chests, um, and just general overview of anatomy and key review areas. So look out for those in future. But we will go into a little bit of anatomy on this one as well. So if we look here, we have these multiple distended small bowel loops here throughout the abdomen. So how can we tell the difference between small and large bowel? And if you look here, it has a very, very tight radius of curvature. It's quite compact. The large bowel tends to be more peripheral. This is a bit of um, cecum ascending colon coming in here, and we've got fecal residue within it. In the small bowel, there's no fecal residue. It's, it's liquid. So these bowel loops they don't contain any fecal residue. They, they've got a tight radius of curvature. They're more centrally located. So we're thinking this is small bowel. And what we can see here, if we just point some arrows to it, we've got these little thin lines coming all the way across. And these are called valvulae conoventes. Now, you only see these in the jejunum. You don't see these in the ileum part of the small bowel. So we know that this section is proximal small bowel. In the large bowel, of course, we have the thicker haustral folds which we can just see one of them there. But the rest of the large bowel, we can't really see on this x-ray. It's mainly small bowel, okay? So how do we know whether it's distended or dilated? And usually, I'll just get the measuring tool here. If it will let me. If it's over three centimeters in diameter, it's considered dilated. So this one's 33 millimeters, so... If you've got three or more dilated small bowel loops, then it raises major concerns for small bowel obstruction. Now, unfortunately, x-rays are quite limited in terms of looking at the cause. So the gold standard is a CT abdomen in obstruction. And so this patient went on to have a CT abdomen. And I'm not an expert on CTs by any means, but even I can see that there's multiple dilated small bowel loops filled with gas here. This denser material is fluid collecting there. We've got a nice air fluid level there. But on this, no mechanical cause was found, guys. So there was no um, there, there was no constriction there. There was no tumour. There there's nothing blocking the small bowel. So this was put down to um, what's called a, a adynamic ileus um, or paralytic ileus. Some people might even use the term post-operative ileus uh, in this case, this case because this was after uh, surgery. But as a general term, either adynamic or paralytic ileus is used. So adynamic ileuses can result from many things. Um, often they're uh, post-surgical, but they can be due to... Um, to taking certain drugs like opioids, uh, they can be metabolic, um, they can be a result of head injuries, uh, neurosurgery, all manner of different things, okay, sepsis as well. So from our point of view, from a reporting radiographer point of view, if we're just having this x-ray with no previous x-rays, no further imaging to look at, all we can do as reporters is describe the fact that, look, there's multiple dilated small bowel loops raising uh, high concerns of an obstruction and then refer them on to CT imaging. And then once they've had the CT imaging, they'll be able to determine the uh, the cause. You won't be able to determine the cause on x-ray. It's always worth just having a look, see if there's any other features here, just in case there's any perforation. So in cases of perforation, and I'll again, I'll probably do a separate video on perforation at some point, but you're looking for a, a double bowel wall sign or regular sign where you've got air on both sides of the bowel wall. We haven't got that here. We don't see any major um, gas collecting in this top end. Now, sometimes you can see in, in quite extreme cases of perforation, uh, the falciform ligament of the liver 
which is a, a curvilinear band up here. We're not seeing that. So we, we've not got any perforation. Just having a quick look at the bones as well. Cases of more localised ileus, that can sometimes be due to some adjacent pathology going on uh, in the organs such as the spleen, liver. Um, it's worth just having a look at the bones in case there's any metastatic disease or anything serious going on like that. So it doesn't look like there's any destructive bone lesions. They've got a, a left total hip replacement and that looks absolutely fine. There's no evidence of any loosening or anything there. And we've got some moderate to severe degenerative changes going on on that right hip there with some narrowing, got some white, some sclerosis, some osteophyte formation and a bit of maybe chondrocalcinosis or ligament ossification going on there. Okay, so that's that's a brief whistle-stop tour of paralytic ileus. Um, but to, for your CPD... To summarise, it's caused by motor paralysis of the digestive tract. Okay, so this is secondary to a, a, a neuromuscular insufficiency that affects the nerve plexus. So usually it's a result of either some adjacent pathology, could be drug-induced, um, could be post-surgical as in this case. And, and surgery is the most common cause. Now, with the small bowel, these effects, if it's just post-surgical ileus, usually resolve within one to two days. So you know, serial x-rays will be able to determine whether that resolves. Treatment's usually conservative. Uh, some, sometimes we'll put um, fluid uh, into the bowel um, to correct the fluid uh, electrolyte insufficiencies. Um, but it's a case of kind of monitoring it, seeing how it goes. The, 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 there's, no, there's no need for any surgery or anything like that with these guys, okay? Further reading, I found this really useful article here, this um, article on the prevalence of management of paralytic ileus. It's a free article uh, by Al et al. I've put the link here, but I'll put the link also on, um, on the little descriptor under this video so you can go in and have a look. But it shows all the features um, of paralytic ileus with a bit of back, a bit more detailed background that I've given you about the, uh, about the prevalence Okay, guys, so that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I say that we're only doing short videos here, but uh, I will do a separate video on normal abdomen and just general review areas when reporting. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully that's uh, something you can take away on paralytic ileus for your CPD. Okay, see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you've liked the video. Give us a like. Um, it's always nice. If you want specific content, just add a note in the comments. Uh, it'd be great to get people involved and obviously I'm going to adapt things as, as people make suggestions. So uh, if you could also comment on the quality of the x-ray, if it was if there was um, any problems with it, let me know as well, because we're still in we're still only on video too, guys. OK, so there's there's bound to be some teething problems. But yeah, let me know about the content and images and hopefully enjoyed it. And yeah, please subscribe and see you soon. Bye for now.